Hey guys, today we're talking about shooting and editing low light, high ISO sports photos. We're gonna be using Lightroom and Topaz Denoise. Let's go. Hey guys, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that describe how to shoot and edit your photos in low light, high ISO situations but a lot of them are portrait or landscape photographers. And that doesn't really apply to sports photography. We tend to shoot in volume. We shoot a lot of frames per game. And we're not trying to make artwork out of individual photos. For example, I'll shoot 1,000, 1,300 different frames in a game, and I deliver galleries of 100 to 200 images from those games. So I can't spend an inordinate amount of time making each individual image a work of art. I have to produce really great stuff in a relatively short period of time. So I've developed a methodology where I can produce a large volume of photos quickly and with really good quality. So step into my office. All right, folks, these are my preferred camera settings and I'll list them off from top to bottom. First of all, we're gonna set our cameras for JPEG, large, fine. Why? Because we're gonna use that noise reduction right there. We're gonna use in-camera noise reduction, which works with JPEG. You can't get that with the raw files. You have to do it later on. So we're gonna use the camera's noise reduction to do the work for us. In this case, I set it for normal. Moving down to ISO, I like to use auto. You're going to be on high school football fields and soccer fields that have widely varying light outputs depending where you are on the field or which direction you're shooting at. There's just no way you're going to be able to keep up. Same thing with this white balance. Again, I set it on auto. And the reason being is varying locations throughout the field, you're going to encounter different white balances. You could try to set it specifically for the scene but I encounter so many different variations in white balance th throughout a field that it, I just leave it on auto. And then if it's off a little bit, I fix it in post. Metering. Generally, I use matrix metering. That's the Nikon's term for it. And then I add about a plus 0.3 or plus 0.5 compensation onto that. Why do I do that? Well, A, matrix works pretty good. As far as the compensation, a little bit of a boost on the compensation, it's because noise really likes dark areas. That's where it really shows up. So I try to give a little boost to those shadows with a little, bit, a little extra compensation. You just don't see as much noise in uh, more lighted areas. Shutter, start at one one thousandth of a second. Uh, that's a generally good starting point for sports, especially at night. I only go down a little bit if I absolutely have to. And as far as aperture, it's as wide as my lens will let me go. Uh, why? Because you're trying to bring in as much light as possible on these poor lighting conditions. Hey guys, so you've gone out, you've shot your photos. What I recommend you do, is, especially if you shoot a ton of photos at a game, is that you use a software called Photo Mechanic. It is widely used by a lot of sports photographers to do exactly what I'm about to do right now, which is to cull your photos. I, When I go out and shoot, I have well over a thousand photos I normally come back with from a game, well over a thousand. There's times I've hit two, over 2,000 frames, just depending on how things go, if I do warm ups, that kind of thing. So you, you got a lot of photos to go through. There's just no way you're gonna use all these photos because frankly, a lot of them aren't any good and they're just not usable. So what we use is this thing called Photo Mechanic. And the reason I use Photo Mechanic is because it renders photos extremely fast, far faster than Lightroom and or Photoshop. And the biggest thing I use it for is to call. So that's the cool thing about it is you can say, let's pick a photo right here click on this little icon here with the uh, magnifying glass, pull it up, and you can take a look, much closer look at it. And the thing you wanna really wanna do is you can press T, if you, if you like a photo, you can press T, and it puts a little check mark down here. You can see that right there, and that check mark is right here, and that's the frame right there. What you do is you just basically go through all these photos, and you hit the check mark wherever you see a photo that you really like. And really what I'm looking for is, is this thing sh sharp? Is it editable? Do I think it's editable? For example, this one's the crop's not gonna be very good, so I'm not gonna use it. Okay, this might be useful, so I'll hit the T, put the little check mark, which you can see right here, and I'll save it for later on. Moving along, eh, mm, eh. Okay, that one's decent. 
Uh, decent. Mm, maybe. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Anyway, just keep on going until I check off all the ones I like. Here they are coming onto the field. You see that example right there. So say you've decided, okay, these are the ones I want. Come out and come to the main program. Go over here to edit and say select tagged. And you'll see, oop, there's the ones, all the ones turned yellow, all the ones I tagged. And then what you could do is you can actually move the photos. So when, the way I normally operate is I download all my photos to my hard drive or a hard drive off my cameras. Um, I, you can do this out of the camera. I prefer to do it off my hard drive so I have more copies. And what you do up here is go here to move photos. You can delete all the originals or not. I like to delete the originals Why I hold on to them. If you shot both RAW and JPEG, you can do both at the same time. You copy it to whatever folder you like. It's from that folder that I'm gonna then open up everything in Lightroom. So hit the move and you go from there. All right, let's move on to Lightroom, start editing some photos. All right, guys, now we're in Lightroom and I just wanna demonstrate something really quick to you guys that shows why I talk about using JPEG over shooting RAW. What you're looking at is a photo that was taken at a football game. Uh, not the same game I showed you earlier, but a different football game. Nikon D5, a 300-2.8 shot RAW. As you can see in Lightroom, I have all the sharpening and noise reduction turned off. As a result, you can see all this pixelization, all this noise, all these colors, lovely colors out here uh, covering it throughout. Now, Lightroom does have a default uh, noise reduction, color noise reduction, but look at this. It's still uh, grainy and nasty and ugly, and who needs it? Who wants that? Now, let me show you another photo that was uh, taken a different game. So this is, by the way, this is ISO 8000. I'm gonna show you another photo. The original game I showed you, this is ISO 12800. Same camera, no noise reduction turned on. This is shot JPEG in camera noise reduction. Look at this background, zero, and I mean zero of those, all those nasty pixels and color striations and pink and purple and green and blah, blah, blah. You, you just don't see it. It's not there. And this is at 12,800 as compared to 8,000 on this one. So right off the bat, you can see there's a huge difference right there. The camera has done yeoman's work on cleaning up all this noise. Now you're gonna tell me, well, Jack, but you can use Lightroom and you can use the noise reduction in this and use luminance and get it down. Yeah, you can, but look at how much trouble you're gonna to have to go through each individual photo to do this, to try to get it some level. And here I am, I cranked it all the way up to 80 just to get about the same levels that are on this 12,800. And this actually looks sharper and nicer than this one and this raw photo. So can I goof around with this and try to get it better? Yeah, but wow, wow, a lot, a lot of effort going into this thing. When I can get it straight out of the camera, just like this, with little work at all. So that's what I'm telling you, shoot JPEG in camera noise reduction. Let's just move on from there. All right, guys, so let's start off with this photo. It's the one I just showed you before. What I've done is I have uh, zeroed out everything, all the settings on it. So this is exactly straight out of the camera. Again, that noise reduction took care of all those funky colors. Uh, there is some grain in here, but we're going to take care of that here in a moment. So the first thing I do is I have a, a setting I like to use. I call it Sports Night. I click on that and it does a variety of things, but let me scroll all the way down to the bottom first. I know normally they tell you to start at the top, but we're going to start at the bottom and I'm going to show you why. So rolling up here, lens corrections. I like to set the remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. This just allows, so it's a Nikon body. And what happens if you turn that off, there's some pincushion effect here. If it's turned off, it just makes corrections for it. It does the best it can with it, assuming that the lens you used is in its um, database. Rolling up, uh, as I mentioned before, I do not put sharpening or noise reduction on these. It's still not in here. I'm gonna take care of that later in Topaz Denoise, but we'll get to that. 
It won't be doing much noise reduction because you see there's not much noise here, but it will be cleaning up some of this grain really nicely. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. Scrolling up. So you're going to see here that in the saturations, I have baked in some reductions in red, orange, and yellow. And the reason I do that is because I find I get the colors of skin tones tend to go a little wonky when I use, as I scroll up a little farther, some dehaze. So I like to use dehaze. I think it makes the colors pop, but as I just talked about, sometimes it throws skin colors off. I also throw a little clarity in there. Moving up, so we're, now we're into the section talking about, you know, the basic section talking about color, white balance. This was as shot. I think it's okay. When we can hit it auto, mm, not much of a difference. Looks like it made it a little bluer. We'll just leave it as shot. I think that looks better. I'm gonna do something heretical here. I'm gonna hit auto. I know, can you believe I did that? Oh my goodness. Brought up shadows, did a couple of different things, brought up vibrance a little bit. It, obviously, I think it's a little overexposed. I think we could all see that. So let me move out here a little bit. Okay, so, so shadows, I'm not gonna let it go up. I'm gonna reduce it. It wanted to bring up this dark area and I, I, don't, I don't want it to do that. I want it to be nice and black. Let's see here. We got some highlights that are a little too much, so let's bring those down. All right, let's bring down, well, let's bring down the overall exposure for sure. Probably maybe around in there. So I love the greens that are in this uniform right here. So let me, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. I think overall this is pretty good as far as these items here. I wanna show you a little trick. So let's say I wanna bring up these greens in here and the saturation on the greens. So you click on this little button right here and that gives you, what you do is you put this little crosshair on the colors that you want to enhance. Then you scroll up and you can see it's bringing up the aquas and the blues. And you can do it, you can go crazy with this if you want. You know, in the, you can do just the opposite. You can bring them down if that was something you wanted to do. See, it made it all muddy and brown, but we don't want to do that. I think we want to pump it up a little bit I because I think it looks kind of cool. And these greens right here. And this field, that guy kind of brings up the greens in the field too. So as you can see, I, it was very specific as to the greens that I decided to bring up in these colors. I kind of like the, the gold on this, but I'm afraid if I bring up the yellows, it might do something on the skin tones and make them wonky. So we're going to leave it alone right there. Uh, is there anything else I want to do? Maybe a little farther down. All right, that's pretty good. I like it. And let's roll with that. Okay, so at this point in time, we're going to do, we're going to send it to, to a pass denoise. And now normally, if I had hundreds of photos, I would just edit them all, and then I would take them over to Topaz Denoise at, in a group as a batch. However, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do something a little different. So you can use Topaz Denoise as a plugin. So go up here to Photo, Edit in Topaz Denoise. Uh, edit with the Lightroom adjustments. That's what I prefer to do. And it'll take it up, brought it, bring it up. So it's gonna make a copy. And in just a second, there it is. Topaz Denoise will come up. Let it do its thing. So the settings I prefer in Topaz Denoise are this low light and auto. I just let it go auto. It's pretty darn good. And it makes decisions as to removing noise and enhancing sharpness. You can see it right down here. Now, if you have a whole bunch of photos, this is gonna take a while. Uh, one photo is like nine seconds, uh, but think if you got like several hundred, it could make, take a while. So I'm just gonna hit apply here. Let it do its thing. You can see right here, N for noise is pretty minimal because that's already been done, but really what it's doing for you is doing the sharpness. And it's almost done. And it brought me right back to Lightroom. So now if you look down here, there's two versions. There's a one that says edit TIFF, and then there's a real original JPEG. So we have now done this. We've done the denoise. And what it's done is pretty much it's just cleaned up some of the some of the graininess. And so let's take another look. So here's the original. Looks a little grainy. As you can see right here, here's the new one. It's cleaned it up, sharpened it up. I just think it looks a lot better. 
And with the, the addition of denoise, um, I've been able to boot, actually take my cameras to higher levels. Um, so here it is, here's the JPEG. You, see, you can see the grain patterns in his uniform right here. Switch to the denoise version. It's cleaned up a lot of that stuff and sharpened it up. So I just think it looks a lot better. And I think this works so much nicer than uh, the version that's in Lightroom. So that's why I use it. So now it is time for the question of the day. And that question is, what are your preferred methods for shooting in low light, high ISO situations? Put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe you have a technique I haven't heard about. In the meantime, hit the subscribe, hit the like. And while you're here, check out a couple of these other videos. All right, I'll see you next time.